us now with the Palestinian perspective is Dr. Hanan Ashrawi from Ramallah in the West Bank. Dr. Ashrawi is a member of the PLO Executive Committee and the first woman elected to the Palestinian National Council. Dr. Ashrawi, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Hanan. This is being seen as a very controversial move, uh, the Palestinian move to join the International Criminal Court. It's being opposed by Israel, of course. It's also being opposed by the United States. Why are the Palestinians seeking membership at this time? We sought membership and we have membership for very, very specific reasons. One, we want to be a member of the international community. Two, we believe in a global rule of law. Three, one of the basic fatal flaws of any peace endeavor or any way in which Israel has been dealt with and the whole conflict has been dealt with is the absence of accountability for Israel, particularly legal or judicial accountability, and the absence of protection for the Palestinians, which enabled Israel in many ways to continue to act with impunity and to continue to destroy the chances of peace by destroying the two-state solution, by stealing the land of the Palestinian state, and by persisting in its acts of violence and violations against the Palestinian people. And we think that the only way to solve this issue is by doing it on the basis of international law and by holding all parties accountable in accordance with international law and international humanitarian law by protecting the weaker party, the vulnerable party, which is the Palestinians, and, of course, by holding Israel, the, the occupation power, accountable in accordance with the law. In one sense, is this uh, meant to push Israel back to the negotiating table? <laughs> no, this is meant to curb Israeli violations, to uh, put some restraints and constraints on Israeli uh, constant uh, Israeli illegal activities and impunity. Uh, the problem is Israel wanted negotiations forever. We started negotiations in 1991. And Israel has procrastinated, prolonged, bought more time for negotiations, uh, lost their substance, lost their relationship to reality, their credibility, and bought time for Israel to create unilateral facts on the ground with settlement activities, the legal annexation of East Jerusalem, the ethnic cleansing of Jerusalem and Area C and so on, to destroy the very objectives of peace. So it's not that we want to bring Israel to the negotiations. We want to see a global intervention in order to end this illegal and cruel situation of captivity called the Israeli military occupation of Palestinian land. And we want to enable Palestine to emerge as a free and independent state and to safeguard the freedom and uh, integrity of the Palestinian people and cause. This has gone on for too long, and we don't want negotiations for their own sake. We want an end to the occupation in accordance with international law and within a specific and binding time frame. Israel has called the Palestinian move, and I'm quoting here, political, hypocritical, and a cynical move, citing the fact that Hamas has fired rockets on Israeli civilians. What's your response <laughs> to that? Well, my response is that the power, the, the power of occupation, the occupying power, and the power that is guilty of aggression and of deliberately targeting uh, in innocent civilians and vulnerable populations, people who have been imposed, who have been uh, closed in under a state of military siege, which is brutal and, and uh, strangulating, is Israel. Israel is guilty of all sorts of uh, war crimes, beginning with settlement activities, which according to the Fourth Geneva Convention and the Rome Statute are war crimes, and going through persistent and willful uh, mass murder, the killing of innocent civilians by bombing and shelling and killing thousands of them. The latest has been the incursion, the war on Gaza, and the killing of 2,200, the wounding of 12,000, the, the demolition of total whole neighborhoods and the obliteration of over 91 full families totally removed from the population register through relentless shelling and bombing and destruction. So this carnage has to stop. Now, if Hamas or any of the groups of Palestine have uh, committed crimes or are guilty, we are perfectly willing to accept international law and to accept any kind of arbitration or any kind of judgment. But we, as a people under occupation, deserve protection. And Israel needs to understand the concept of limits and constraints. And no amount of verbal manipulations and spin and, and attempts at uh, circumlocution and deception uh, in terms of public opinion 
will cover the basic fact. Israel is an illegal military occupation. Israel's behavior has been outside the norms of civilized behavior in addition to in violation of international law. There has to be intervention that is legal and judicial in order to end this fatal situation. Now, the Palestinian Authority has already faced financial penalties for going ahead with this move. Israel, as you know, has withheld tax revenues until very recently. The United States is also threatening to withhold aid to the Palestinian Authority. Are you not concerned about this? Well, look, how much worse can they do? I mean, these are our funds. Uh, unfortunately, we are in a situation under occupation where we do not control our uh, entrance points and exit points in Palestine. We do not control our borders or even our freedom of movement. So we pay Israel 3% of our customs funds in order to collect them for us because this is a very profitable occupation for Israel. And it uses the money as a means of pressure and blackmail. We are within our rights. To, to ask for a global rule of law and international law. And this, uh, Israel should not act, again, illegally by stealing or withholding our, our money. And number two, uh, uh, if the U.S. doesn't want to uh, continue with any kind of economic cooperation and so on, it knows that it can stop. But this policy has proved to be a policy of political bankruptcy in addition of uh, moral bankruptcy, because you cannot keep punishing the victim. You cannot keep putting pressure on the Palestinians, blackmailing the Palestinians to acquiesce. They will not break our spirit. We will not surrender to the occupation. And at the same time, give Israel, you know, advanced payments and positive inducements and rewards in order to persist or in order to cease from some of its illegal actions. This situation has to end. We are, of course, worried. We haven't uh, uh, paid salaries uh, except for 60 percent for the last four months. Uh, the civil service has been in, in a very serious situation. And of course, the economy as a whole is in dire straits. But there are certain issues, Anand, that are not for sale. Your rights are not for sale. Your human dignity is not for sale. Your right to self-determination, your freedom as a human being, these things cannot be subject to manipulations or to blackmail and coercion because ultimately these are strategic issues. This is not just short-term gains or short-term rights. These are strategic issues that have to do with peace and with the future of the whole region. Dr. Ushrawi, uh, the Palestinians are now full members of the ICC and uh, that membership came into full effect at the beginning of this month. So what are your next steps? Are you going to be seeking very specific charges against very yes. specific individuals in Israel? Well, the process has started. As you know, joining the ICC starts with acceding to the Rome Statute. And then a process began by means of which the prosecutor has been uh, carrying out a preliminary investigation already since uh, January when we uh, acceded to the Rome Statute. April 1st, we became officially members of the International Criminal Court, but the process had begun as of January. And uh, the, the prosecutor is perfectly within her rights to continue and to press ahead. And we are within our rights, as we have been doing, to supply her with the information, with the files, with all the evidence that is needed for her to make the proper judgments as to whether there is a case to be answered or not. And we will be uh, pursuing this course, and we will hold Israel accountable systematically in two major areas. The first area, which is an ongoing war crime, the settlement activities that are in violation of international humanitarian law, the Fourth Geneva Convention, as well as the Rome Statute, which defines settlements as war crimes, because Israel is stealing our land and resources and is transporting and bringing in illegally its own population to live on this stolen Palestinian land, and therefore it is defined as a war crime. And two, we will continue, we will press si simultaneously the issue of the carnage, the issue of the massacre, the, the crimes that have been committed by Israel by shelling and bombing and killing innocent civilians, destroying infrastructure and institutions, uh, demolishing, obliterating whole neighborhoods, whole areas in Gaza. This has to be brought to the attention of the, and it has been, of the criminal court, and Israel has to be held accountable. Otherwise, every couple of years, Israel will launch another attack on Gaza and kill a few more thousand Gazans and continue with its cruel and lethal uh, blockade or siege of Gaza. 
Dr. Schwab, we've got a bit of time left. Are you also seeking an investigation into the death of the Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat? We have sought that. We have asked for an international investigation. And uh, unfortunately, we got uh, different results. We got results from the French court that has been looking into this. Uh, and we got uh, results from the uh, Swiss uh, company that has been looking into it. And there have been contradictory results. We are still looking into it. And we hope to, to get some definite definitive answers as to how he was killed. Some say that uh, some reports indicate the presence of polonium and the fact that this was the uh, toxic substance introduced into his system. And others say that they didn't see enough evidence to indicate that. But the suspicions uh, continue to be that he was uh, assassinated. Dr. Hanan Ashrawi, thank you for joining us, ma'am.